everyone, it's Michelle Caruana from Play Cafe Academy, and I'm so excited for this video today because it is definitely my most highly requested video ever. So if you guys have been following my channel for a while, you know that I've done a ton of tours of our inside, our play area, our baby area, our sensory corner, our bathrooms, behind our cafe counter, our kitchen, our fridge. I've shown you guys in person behind the scenes of all of that, but today I'm gonna to get a little bit more specific and I'm gonna share how much each of our toys and pieces of equipment actually cost. Now, I'm not going to show you every single piece of play food and things like that because it would take hours, but I am gonna show you which uh, toys and pieces of equipment took up the biggest chunks of our budget so that you can start estimating your startup costs if you are looking to open a similar business. And if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I put out a new video all about Play Cafe ownership every single week. All right, without further ado, let's walk through the play area and see how much each of our toys and pieces of larger equipment actually cost. All right, let's start with our most expensive piece of equipment. This is our Lilliput Play Home Bakery. So it's actually so cute on the inside. So it has a little counter. We put all sorts of little play food on the shelves and things like that. It has a really nice floor. This was after probably like five or six years of use. We did have to constantly repaint it. So I will say for being such an expensive piece of equipment, it needed a lot of maintenance, but it was still super cute and everybody loved it. And it was our biggest cornerstone piece in our indoor playground. And it cost about $14,600. Now we did get a little bit of a discount because we bought a display model from one of the conventions. But again, this was something that everybody knew us for. The kids absolutely loved it. And I loved working with Lilliput Play Homes. All right, the next piece of equipment is our other Lilliput Play Home. So this was our art studio. So there's a little peek inside. We changed this one up all the time. So at first it was an art studio, but it got super messy having art supplies all over. So then we switched it to a little house. So we have a little Melissa and Doug couch in there. We have a little playset kitchen. I highly recommend, and I'm going to probably say this a couple of times, buy commercial grade, don't buy things that are meant for people's homes. It will not hold up. So as you can see in the back, we also have a Melissa and Doug little diner that lasted maybe three months before it completely fell apart. Again, I broke my own rule here and I bought it because I thought it was just so cute, but because it's meant for people's homes and not for a commercial business that sees a lot of use, it fell apart almost immediately. <laughs> So that art studio slash little house was $7,900. And again, that is with a discount applied. And don't forget these are 2015 prices. I am not sure if Lilliput has raised these prices. This is just what we paid in 2015. All right, this is probably my favorite piece of equipment. It was our little ECR for kids caterpillar. And it was my favorite because it was easy to clean. This saw constant use over four years and it was still in absolute perfect condition when we left. So it didn't require any maintenance. It didn't break. It didn't show any signs of fault ever. And it was just so cute and bright. And as you can see, the kids can kind of crawl all the way through it. So I absolutely loved this. And unlike a lot of the other pieces of toys and equipment that we had to constantly replace, this one again, stayed so perfectly well-maintained throughout the entire time we had it. And it was only $300 on Amazon. So I cannot recommend this piece of equipment enough. And it really went with our colors. And again, I love how bright it is. This boat, I have a major love-hate relationship with. Um, we never had an issue. However, we did get a lot of comments that parents were worried that their little one's fingers would get stuck when the boat was rocking or things like that, or that their little one would kind of slip down and fall into the base of the boat. Again, we never had an issue. We had it for about two years. And while it was one of our favorite pieces and one of the things people loved most about our space, we did have to replace it at least four times in two years. So I kept replacing it, kept replacing it. And then finally, I just gave up and we put a plastic pirate ship there. Now, I'm not going to talk about the pirate ship. It was another ECR for kids purchase, and that was because it completely fell apart, again, in less than a couple months. So I'm not even going to recommend that one. The boat, I'm only including, even though I don't really recommend it, because so many different people asked me about it. So we got that on Amazon. It was about $279. 
but we did have to pay for shipping. So again, I don't really recommend this boat, but it is something that parents really enjoy. All right, now I'm gonna move over to our sensory corner. And again, I did an in-person tour of our entire interior space and our play area, but it was just easier to go through the prices this way. So that's why I'm doing it in this format. But if you wanna see the live in-person tour, I did link it below this video. So all of this stuff that you're going to see here, we purchased from sensoryedge.com. I'm gonna link them below this video. This was our little wall domino toy. This was a favorite, not only for kids, but also for parents. Parents absolutely loved playing with this. When you pulled on those little strings, the dominoes would actually stand up. And this was only $169. We had this for over three years and it was still in absolutely perfect condition when we sold it to another indoor play area. These two toys were about $350 together. Um, I have $300 here because we did get a little bit of a discount on the right toy. It was a little bit cheaper and I absolutely love both of these toys. They are great for sensory input, for fine motor play, um, and just if kids need a little bit of quiet time. So those were about $300 together. Again, these are 200, uh, two, 2016 prices. This is her most expensive sensory edge purpose. And honestly, all it does is you can wind up the gear and it will rotate the type of fruits you see. Again, if you want to see the in-person tour, I linked up below this video, but it was a thousand dollars for this tree. And even though it wasn't super functional, I still absolutely loved it. It really drew people's eyes in and it really went with our little village theme. So I don't regret it, even though it was $1,000 and even though kids didn't play with it all that much because it was very eye pleasing, um, very aesthetically pleasing and parents really loved it. It looked so great in our space. This is a wall panel, again, from Sensory Edge. So you can buy those two support bars separately. Those were about $100. And then each of the panels, we can fit up to three panels in here, but we purchased five so that we could constantly have a different rotation so that kids who were members would always have something different to play with. So we rotated them. So all together, we spent $1,200 on the support bars and five panels. So the panels range between $100 and $300, depending on how many pieces there were and how complicated they were. But I absolutely love these panels. They got probably the most use out of any of our Sensory Edge toys. All right, now this one, it actually it didn't really get a whole lot of use. Um, it's called the Bees in the Meadow Wall Panel if you're looking on sensoryedge.com. But again, it was something that just looked so nice in our space and it just was so aesthetically pleasing. So even though it didn't get a ton of use, it did look really good, but just take with that information what you will. And that was $320. Next, I'm gonna talk about our train table. So this was something that we didn't buy commercial because I didn't really find any available. So we did have to replace it a couple times. So I'm going to quote the price of the train table, the tracks, which we glued down with Gorilla Glue. I cannot recommend gluing the tracks down enough. We didn't start with it glued and our staff spent so much time constantly helping kids with the tracks. If you are geared towards older children and your general play age is four and up, then kids might want to build with the tracks. But because we generally cater to kids under three, they didn't really have the fine motor skills to put the tracks together, at least correctly. They just wanted to play with the trains. So the train table, the tracks, which we glued down and a bunch of different trains cost $400 altogether. And it was, again, one of our most used items in our facility. Now I'm gonna talk about the baby area. So these two wall panels are both from Sensory Edge and they were $170 each. So it's a little mirror, kids can see it when they um, you know, are on their tummy for tummy time. And then that cow wall panel was again, $170 from Sensory Edge. This panel, or excuse me, this mirror was also from ECR for kids and it was $170. This foam ball pit, I'm not gonna give a better picture of it because they actually don't make it anymore, or at least I couldn't find anywhere that it was available, but it was ECR for kids and it was $350 on Amazon. But again, the brand is ECR for kids, but I did find a comparable item that was, I just searched foam ball pit on Amazon 
I did find a comparable one for just $180, not including the price of balls, or we used to use a lot of sensory blocks in there because those are only gonna be like 20 or $30. These foam blocks are again, ECR for kids. I absolutely love that brand. It's super, super durable for most things. These blocks we had the entire duration that we were open, almost six year, five or six years, and they were only $65. Could not recommend them enough. These little baby slides I just got on Amazon, didn't get a whole lot of use. I bought them because they looked really cute and I just took a chance on it. So depending on the aesthetic of your space, it might fit, it might not. Um, these were something that the older kids tended to want to use and abuse. So we had to be sure that we were only letting babies play in the baby area because anything wooden that isn't made to support a larger child is probably going to break. But we didn't have these break the entire time we had them. But again, they also weren't super functional. We had activity cubes. These were about $80 each and they got so much use. And I love that we can rearrange them and move them around our space, have it in the baby area one day, have it in the bigger child area the next day. So I love anything portable so that we can keep our space nice and fresh. And something else that I wanted to mention before I moved on is we have that wood look foam floor in the baby area. And I got those on Amazon. I just searched uh, wood look foam floor and it cost us about $400 to fill the entire space. I think we had to get four different sets of $100 foam floor tiles to cover the whole space. Next, I wanna talk about these blocks. Basically, you just trace your finger along them and there was letters, shapes, and numbers. These were with the cart and with the sensory blocks. I got them all from Sensory Edge and it was $350 for the three sets of blocks and the blocks you see at the bottom. The cart I actually got from Amazon, love it. It's such a great multi-use piece of equipment. And then this wall panel, um, it's so funny because somebody told me before I purchased this that it's really, really loud. So don't put it in a quiet area, but I didn't listen, I don't know why. And I put it in our quote unquote quiet corner. So whenever anybody turns those gears, it's actually really, really loud. But again, it's so nice to look at and kids really, really love this toy. So if a child's having a meltdown or just needs to take a step away from our play area, this is actually on the cafe side of our business outside of the gated play area. This was also great if um, we were at capacity and people had to wait to enter the play area or if parents needed to distract their kids with something to come out of the play area while they put on their shoes or jacket or anything like that. So I highly recommend putting toys and wall panels and things like that, not only inside your play area, but around your facility because the children and parents are going to use your entire facility while they're there, chances are. So I absolutely loved this little corner of toys. And it was again, also perfect if a mom had to breastfeed and wanted a little bit more privacy. We of course would never require that, but this couch and little quiet corner in the left-hand corner, there's a couch. Um, it was a favorite for moms or children who needed just a little bit more space and or privacy. And that was $400 for that wall panel. But again, I love it. It's just a little loud. So if you're planning it for your space, just be a little cognizant of where you're actually planning to put it. All right, next I wanted to talk about our tables. So if you've been following my YouTube channel for a while, you know that we used to have black pointy like square tables without the rounded edges. That was actually a mistake. The manufacturer sent us the wrong tables, but then they kind of went out of business and completely ghosted me. So I wasn't able to correct it. So about two years into our business, we replaced them with these tables from Amazon. And these tables from Amazon were only $117 each. We had 12 of them. So we had six outside the play area and then six inside the play area. They're just from Amazon. Um, and they were probably 10% of the price. So they were a 90% price reduction from the ones that we purchased from like a professional furniture, restaurant furniture store. And they were so much better. They did require us to tighten the legs quite often because we did move them around for parties and things like that. So we did have to tighten the legs quite a bit. I would say like a couple times a week. But to me, it was so worth it for the price and they're safer. They are so much more they make our space so much brighter and I just love them so much. Could not really recommend them enough. And then finally our chairs. So our chairs we did also get from that furniture company. 
we had to buy them in two different sets. They were between 20 and $50 each, depending on how many you buy. But we have about 50 chairs because not only did we have them in our cafe, we also had some for our mobile events and parties. So we spent about $2,000 on these chairs. And I know this is a video mainly talking about our play area, but I did wanna mention them as well because I do get a lot of questions. Next, we have a couple Ikea tables and chairs. These are the plastic ones. The table and chairs are generally sold separately. And an entire set of table and chairs generally cost us around $150. I love that these are so easy to wipe clean and they are so durable. We had these for five or six years. And again, absolutely no issues. We were able to clean them with magic eraser whenever we got paint or anything on them. And it was great to have something that was child size. All right, that wraps up today's discussion all about how much our toys and pieces of equipment actually cost. If you're new here, don't forget to grab my free indoor playground business bundle. Just click the link below this video and you can download it instantly for free. And again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I put out a new video all about owning an indoor playground every single week. But by the time I'm releasing this video, I already have over 100 videos ready for you to check out. So subscribe to my channel and I will see you right back here next week. Have a great day.